Putting fuel in your car or indeed charging your EV is getting more expensive by the week. But what can you do to save some money? Well, we're here at Western Motors in Drada to find out. Take a moment, enjoy the calm. You could be stuck on the N7 with two teething toddlers, but we don't do stress at the AA. We do roadside rescue and our trained mechanics fix eight out of 10 problems at the roadside. Buy online now at the AA.ie. Relax. Yellow and black have got your back. We have a loan of the Skoda Enyaq. This is the coupe just here. An AA Ireland Car Award winner for Best Family AEV. And we also have the Skoda Kodiak, which also won an award for the Best Large Crossover. This one is a diesel. This one is fully electric. And what we want to do today is find out, can you save yourself a few pennies by driving that bit slower? But how much will you save? We're going to find out. So Blake, it's a potentially wet and a little bit cold day, but what is the rule we have today? What's the premise of what we're trying to do? So the plan is we're going to do the exact same route twice. We've got two cars that are pretty much similar, roughly the same cost, roughly the same weight and, and size from the same manufacturer. What we're going to do is an 80 kilometer route. So where we are now, Western Motors and Drogheda, it's bang on the motorway. So we're going to go from here, just outside Drogheda, all the way up to the far side of Dundalk, go around a roundabout and straight back down the M1 with the same speed limits all the way there and back. But we're going to do that route twice. So we're going to, when we get back here, we will reset the trip on both cars. We are going to use cruise control just to level the playing field. Now cruise control might necessarily be the best way to save fuel. However, we're going to use it just to make sure that we have a quite equal comparison between the two cars, right? Yeah, and beyond that as well, we've got the Kodiak topped up. Now with the Enyaq, we've got that charged up. And the reason that we've, we've done that on a DC charger at the moment is that we want the battery to be nice and warm so that the efficiency has, is fair. And that's what we're trying to do is level the playing field. So we've checked tire pressures, the engines are warmed up because we've given them both to spin around, the battery's warm as well. This is as even as possible and same as you say with the cruise control. And as you said, it is, it's, it's a bit windy today and that's the reason that we're gonna go up and back on the same route. So wind doesn't become a factor. It's not much of a factor in the diesel. It does have a little bit of an effect. It has more of an effect in the electric vehicle so so look the plan is let's set off on both cars now we're going to drive them at what speed now we're going to do 120 or 110 first we're doing 120 on the way out and the way back as our first loop because traffic is a little bit lighter and we're less likely to be held up by other cars then later on as it gets into the late afternoon we're going to do the one again at, at 100 and see if there's a significant difference so the idea at the end we'll see okay driven the same distance at 120 and the other at 100 what was the percentage difference in both fuel economy and potential range and EV efficiency between the two cars. That's right. And if you are watching this, why don't you just make a guess yourself? Go on the comments down below, let us know what you think, and then we'll see how that compares to your guess afterwards. Okay, let's go and do it. Yeah. Well, Hello. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. All right, good. Well, I... How are you getting on there? We're at the halfway point now as we turn to go back towards Drogheda. So it's difficult to keep the speed up uh, because of the motorway being quite congested. So that's, I'm probably not averaging anything like I should be, but I'm trying to drive at 120 km per hour as much as possible. I'm averaging 6.4 litres per 100 kilometres at the moment, um, which has sort of settled down from what was a higher figure starting off. So. Um, yeah. So far at the halfway point, 6.4 litres per 100 kilometres. 6.4 litres. Okay, my clock has 39 kilometres done uh, over 24 minutes. So I'm averaging 17.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometres. So it'll be interesting to see how that's that comes. Yeah, now, and I think that's into a little wind as well. So we'll see how that compares once we get back to Western. For 120 on a motorway in an EV, that's a really strong figure. That's excellent. Yeah, a couple of times we've come up behind a truck, but I, I think we're we're still averaging 117 instead of the 120, you know? Great, right, okay. Well, look, uh, let's say uh, we're on the return leg now, so let's see how we get on. Okay, see you back there. So we're just back from our first run there, our first loop, and we have all the numbers here. Now it's exactly 78 kilometers according to the Enyaq Coupe. I presume yours was the yeah, same. Yeah, exactly the same. Grand. Um, 120 kilometers an hour, we didn't get to keep it up all the time. I'd say the average was more like 117 or something, wasn't it? Coming yeah, up? a little bit congested on the way up, lots of trucks, and 
if a truck pulls out in front of you, that means you're you're stuck to 90 or so for a while. But I'd say what, averaging what, 116, 117? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the thing that's key is that it's consistent on the way with the hundreds, because we won't be able to keep up a hundred because trucks no. will still pull out anyway. Um, okay, so what we really want to know is fuel consumption. I'll go first with the Enyaq. I used, over the course of 78 kilometers, 19.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which also constituted 21% of the battery. Okay, I was averaging 6.6 .6 litres per 100 kilometres. We won't really know the exact figure in terms of actual physical fuel until the end. But, um, but yeah, that's not, it's not a bad figure for what is a big, heavy vehicle. So um, the real key is going to be if there's any difference, if there's much of a difference when we do it second time round. Yeah, so I think it's time, while the engines are warm, the batteries are warm, everything's consistent, let's just turn around and do the same loop let's again. go again. Well, Paddy, we are coming around the roundabout on the way back for our, our test at 100 kilometres an hour. How is your consumption getting on? Quite a bit different, Blake. We are down to 4.1 litres per 100 kilometre in uh, the Kodiak, which is quite a drop. Uh, now, I'm not, again, I'm not sure. We were probably a little bit short of 100 kilometres per hour. There has been a little bit of congestion with trucks and stuff, but it's generally been there and thereabouts at 100, but quite a significant drop. So, as it stands at the moment, we're looking like a different of between 4.2, 4.3 litres per hundred kilometre at this speed and 6.6 .6 litres per hundred kilometres at 120. What about you? Well, that, that's a huge difference. Uh, yeah, a little bit of congestion, but I think the crucial thing is that it's consistent. So, we suffered congestion when we were at 120, and we have at 100 as well. But my consumption is down to 13.4 kilowatt hours wow. per. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's incredible. So at this rate, I would be on course for a range of about 600 kilometers out of the Enya Coupe. So if you were to play that out in your head, if, uh, if Drogheda, where, where you live, is 300 kilometers from Cork, for example, the difference between driving at 100 and 120 in the end could be quite significant. Uh, massive, absolutely massive. But like we're, we're going to fully crunch the numbers when we're back, when we get the final result. Uh, we've still, still got 40 kilometers to go, which, you know, with wind and altitude might make a little bit of a difference. So I'm looking forward to seeing how we get on. Just to reiterate the point, both of us were driving at the same speed we had cruise control on and we let the cruise control figure out the throttle adjustments and that so rather than leaving it to us we left it to the car in both cars as well the air conditioning is on at 19 degrees centigrade so it's all the same in terms of conditions roads the uh, vehicles are obviously the only difference so it's just gone a quarter to four we've been driving on two separate occasions for about an hour each time and we are now back and done we have uh, driven both of those routes at 100 and 120 kilometers per hour. So Blake, tell us first things first about the Enyaq. How did that go? Yeah, well, lovely car. <laughs> really enjoyed my time with it. My average, so let's say at the 120 kilometers an hour, the first one that we did a little bit faster, I averaged 19.3 kilowatt hours for wow. every 100 kilometers we drove. Which is okay for 120 kilometers per hour on oh, a motorway, not bad. A big, that's more than two tons, yeah. big boxy thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. It actually works out because this has a 77 kilowatt hour usable battery as 399 kilometers range. Let's call it 400. If you're driving on a motorway at that speed. Full speed, and in those conditions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then, what happened then when you swapped over and you drove it at 100? Big difference, really big difference. My average dropped from 19.3 down to 14 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That jump. That's what, about 27.5%? 27.5% difference. Wow, quite a difference. So what does that equate to in real world terms? What would that range go to in theory? Well, it would have been 399, it's called 400. At the lower speed, 550, which is exactly the WLTP figure of that car. Okay, so WLTP figure is possible if you drive it at the right speed. And you did have aircon on, there was no hypermiling, it was cold in the car, and you had, a, <laughs> you had cruise control on as well, so you were letting the yeah. car do all of the driving and such in terms fine. of accelerating, etc. So I, I am absolutely sure that if, if I did tuck behind a truck and I was happy just to come back to, let's say, 90 kilometers an hour, that that thing would have cleared 600 kilometers if you were really, really careful with it. It was a very, very similar story with the Kodiak as well. So look, different powertrain. This is a diesel. 
and we had started it uh, to full up but we averaged 6.6 .6 litres per 100 kilometres on the first trip, which okay. was 120 kilometres per hour, which again is not bad for a big, heavy vehicle. And that changed quite significantly as well. When we did the right. second leg, it moved down to 4.7 litres per 100 kilometres. At wow. one stage, for most of the journey actually, I was about 4.4, 4.5 litres per 100 kilometres. Yeah. So that is 29% of a difference. 29, so the difference for both of us you know, diesel and then fully electric was essentially the same. Yeah, exactly. Now let's talk real world examples. So I had done a, a video recently driving down to Milton and back uh, in the Aura Funky Cat. So yeah. it was a, it's from Drogheda to Milton. It's a really lovely round number of 300 kilometers from where I set off anyway. So if you had driven the Enyaq at 120 kilometers per hour, you would have what got to Middleton there, thereabouts. We would have got to Middleton with about you know 20 percent left over, thereabouts. Yeah. If you'd driven at 100, you might have got home or there, thereabouts, close I, to. I would say I would have gone from Drogheda to Middleton and back to the M50 Fin on a single charge. Interestingly enough, in the Kodiak and the diesel, I would have at 120 kilometers per hour got from Drogheda to Middleton and back to Drogheda and back to Middleton. But at 100, I would have got Drogheda to Middleton, Dro Middleton to Drogheda, and Drogheda to back to Middleton again, and home again. So I would have done both <laughs> legs. Because uh, we reckoned yeah. it would have done about 1,200 odd kilometers. I think it was 1,276 kilometers yeah. on, the mo on the motorway at 100 kilometers per hour. Very efficient. Um, obviously under those conditions so and just to add on to that as well you think oh you're just ticking along at 100 it's going to take you days no the difference really we worked it out is going to be in and around 25 maybe 30 minutes of a difference between Drogheda and Middleton which actually isn't that much at all and you're probably going to arrive there more relaxed because you're just ticking along in the inside lane so our drive today was what about six or seven minutes difference uh, nine minutes I think it worked yeah. out yeah on an 80 kilometer drive so there you go, at the start of the video, we asked you if we could actually save any money by driving at a slightly slower speed. And we proved it today, Paddy dropping about 29 or 27 and a half percent between these two cars. So if you need to save a few bob out there, drop your speed down on the motorway and you'll see a big difference at the end of the year.